Hey everyone in the world of cloud computing and welcome to episode 8 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Hi Dave, great to see you this week, how's it going? Great to be here man, happy new year. Happy New Year to you too, to although break. we're probably slightly delayed because uh, these shows are going out sort of every uh, every two weeks. <laughs> hey, they're worth the wait. Everybody's just sobering up from the holidays, from New Year's Eve, and so they're getting back into the swing of things. And so we'll talk to them about cloud computing in Australia. Exactly right, exactly right. And this week, Dave and I will be talking about Australia and how the business and the usage of cloud computing services are going. So the ABS research uh, of IT services and innovation in Australian businesses, uh, there was a report done in 2015 to 16, which found that just under a third of Australian businesses were reported to using paid cloud computing services. And that result came in at 31%. The previous year, there were only 19% of businesses using paid cloud computing. And the 2016 survey by Microsoft found that 40% of Australian businesses are already using cloud computing, or, or should I say hybrid cloud computing. These statistics, Dave, look better than what we're seeing in the USA and other parts of the world. Why do you think this is so? I think that Australia is really kind of an innovative microcosm unto itself. And so the economy is much smaller than the USA. So it's very difficult to compare apples to apples. Um, but ultimately, Australia is about innovation and the ability to kind of innovate in kind of the new cutting edge and be kind of reinventing itself in terms of kind of the new state of the art country, which is which is why we're doing this show and why Australia has always been interesting to me kind of as a as a microcosm of cloud computing adoption. And so what we're seeing is that they're willing to take some risks. They're willing to open up their minds and their hearts in terms of new technology, in this case, cloud computing. Lots of other different technologies come down the line as well. And we're gonna see a tremendous uptick in the utilization of cloud computing over the next couple of years, so 2018, 2019. So 2016, you know, in the Microsoft survey, you know, 40% of the businesses, you know, are already into hybrid cloud computing, which is amazing. Um, ultimately, if you compare that in the United States, uh, I can't get a lot of my existing clients to get off the fence in terms of adopting cloud-based systems. And so here we are, you know, getting beat in terms of innovation in terms of Australia. So this is really kind of a call to action as to, you know, as to the USA being kind of the innovative leaders in the world really not necessarily adopting some of these existing cloud computing systems that are starting to, you know, really kind of take off. But Australia, some parts of Europe, you know, some parts of Asia Pac, you know, Alibaba Cloud, those sorts of things are really trying to inflect right now. And I think it's really kind of interesting the way that the worm has turned, so to speak, which is the U uh, United States phrase, in terms of how things are, are you know, kind of, moving faster in other countries in the USA when last 20 years it was considered you know quite the opposite the IT research group Gartner predicted that in February 2017 that there was going to be an Australian cloud market which would increase by 15 percent uh, from the the last year to almost 6.5 billion uh, and that's mainly due to the software as a service adoption isn't it yeah, it pretty much is. And and thing, people don't understand that if you kind of break out the cloud market as NIST, which is the uh, National Institute of Science and Technology here in the state, which is very close to me physically uh, right now, ultimately kind of breaks it out to infrastructure as a service and software as a service and platform as a service. But if you look at, at really this as kind of an adoption into how we're going to outsource processes and how we're going to outsource compute outside of the enterprise, Software as a service is really kind of the biggest impact in that business. We just have a tendency to ignore it because we kind of chase the infrastructure as a service providers, the Amazons, the Googles, the Microsofts, and the Alibabas. So your ability to kind of find uh, application analogs are basically systems that exist outside of your enterprise. Uh, they're able to leverage on demand. And to the tune of, you know, it used to be a couple of dozen 10 years ago, you know, it's 100 200 applications that exist outside the enterprise via these software as a service systems is really the inflection point of, of, of cloud computing, the ability to kind of leverage those sorts of things. So it's a mix of existing infrastructure as a service, which is the ability to kind of outsource what's existing in your data center. But more 
often and probably more valuable is the ability to, in essence, find platform analogs or application analogs that exist outside of your firewalls. You know, Salesforce.com is obviously the poster child there, but there's 2,000, 3,000 SaaS applications out there that are doing all sorts of unique things, such as HR management, um, uh, office automation. You know, even I, I found some applications that are almost a billion dollar companies that are doing you know, bail bonds management and the ability to kind of do things that are very unique in the industry. And I think that'll continue. So not only it's a matter of moving infrastructure out and in essence, finding server and platform analogs that exist outside your firewall and infrastructure as service providers, but the ability to find application analogs as well. And I think that's going to be the largest inflection point going forward. And to Australians, um, to, to their credit, um, they're able to adopt and accept those things, even though many of those things are running outside the country. And so they're opening their minds and all, obviously being more innovative and more flexible in terms of how these things are really kind of coming together. And I think that's to the credit. So, I mean, good job there, you know, down in Australia and in, in, in adopting some of the newer technology out there. And I, I expect, you know, better, bigger and better things for you in the future. And, uh, you know, shame on you, USA, you know, get with it. Um, you know, other countries are, are, are beating us and I, I think that's unacceptable, but you know, ultimately it's about innovation. It's about time to market. It's about all these sorts of things, which are really, you know, kind of, uh, overlooked in some of the global 2000 companies, many that exist in the U S. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, Australia does embrace and it does embrace a lot from over, overseas and, and looks for that innovation. I think that really is a, a credit to Australia and the way it embraces technology. And, and it has, you know, in leaps and bounds caught up and if not surpassed certain areas of other countries with its embracing of the cloud, whether it be hybrid or now multi-cloud, we're hearing a lot of at the moment as well. It was uh, SAP's global technology chief, Bill McDermott, actually said about the significant opportunities within, within the accelerated growth in Australia and, and looking how they're seized to take market share across government uh, as well as smaller enterprises as well. So you're absolutely spot on there, with Dave, with what you've just said. So, so what, what's different there? So you, you live in Australia, I don't. So ultimately, you know, what is the culture there that's really kind of driving this? Because it is a cultural thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think there's people have really got their, their eyes open and they really want to be seen to shining the light forward. No, I think Australia, in some respects, um, from the past feels like they were behind because they were so far away and maybe I'm, I'm speaking out of turn here I'm not actually Australian um, but I think so that there seems to be you know a legacy pardon the pun on legacy um, technologies but a legacy of we need to catch up we need to catch up obviously there is quite a, a huge um, you know divide within the northern and the southern hemisphere with regards to time but certainly with regards to technology that is that is not the case anymore um, some of the, some huge Australian com uh, companies dominate the world with regards to technology, uh, and and are leading the way. So I think it really is the mindset to embrace change, and appreciate what other cultures and what other countries can bring to the table, how Australia can enhance that, and also you know develop it and make it better. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's actually a culture. I think a lot of countries should look to replicate, and so the size of the economy is analogous to a lot of economies that exist in Europe and a lot, a lot of economies that exist in Asia PAC and you know other areas of the country and even emerging you know third world countries things like that and so this is really kind of a way that you can set yourself apart you know from the larger global 2000 companies that you know really become risk adverse and very difficult to you know deal with in terms of leveraging cloud based systems so I think it's it's a matter of looking to Australia as really kind of setting the model and, and the pace of the rest of the world. So you guys have a lot on your shoulders, so good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thanks for another great Australia show this week. It's really good to have you back in the new year, although we're probably two weeks behind everything else with regards to the, the release of this show. So a very happy new year to you too. <laughs> Happy New Year to you, Brad. Well, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's Australia show. And please remember to like, comment and subscribe to the channel for more of our shows that, that are released each week. Um, you can also find David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. And you can reach myself on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. So until next week, thanks very much. And